We've only been together a short while, and I think it's about time we had a chat. A chat about some numbers. 23.6 volts. A chat about some cables. Fairly good quality USB-C cable. And a chat about something I can't even bring myself forward to say. I read the manual. It's Da Vinci time. So I thought it was about time to do a follow up on the initial unboxing and demo video for the 372 watt hour solar generator from All Powers, currently being suggested in the top corner right now. Um, that video alone has generated more comments on this channel than anything we've seen before. So um, it's kind of a hot topic and I think there's various nuances to this battery. Uh, charging alone is a topic which I'm gonna cover in this video and um, the way you can do it, the kind of cables you can use, and uh, what hasn't and hasn't worked. And I'm also gonna do something I've never done on this channel and openly admit to, um, but you'll stay tuned for that, that'll be later on in this uh, video. Um, so let's get going. So let's have a look at something I found out with using the uh, charging brick, which is right down here which uh, comes with uh, this battery. Um, I've also got an energy monitoring plug here um, just to show the kind of wattage that the actual brick uses to charge the uh, battery, which I'm also gonna flip over temporarily to my mobile phone during this segment to show you uh, the actual uh, consumption of energy on this. Um, one thing I found with this is something really odd. So I'm gonna plug this in as if you're charging it normally. And then what will happen is usually this will go up to the end of about 54 or 55 watts once it's settled down and stabilised, which usually takes about five or so seconds for it to do. And then that will that'll reach its peak. And as you can see on here, it's at 54 watts. Um, so I'm oh, 55 now, it's stabilised off. So I'm just going to go over to my mobile phone now and I'm going to show you in there that it's actually what it's actually consuming in the real world. Now we're back and the odd thing I've found about this is if you interrupt this power supply which I'm going to do now just to show you and then plug in before the display has gone back to sleep what it does or what it seems to do it seems to cap the amount of energy that goes back in I don't know the reason for this whether this is inbuilt for this battery or what but as you can see it's even though it's still only 72 percent charged it's only gone back up to 48 watts in and if we do the same again so pull it out push it in again before it had a chance to sleep, it's dropped down to 45 watts. And I'll do the same again. So take it out, go back to, and then put it back in again. And then if you watch, again, it's capped it again. So it won't now go above that 38 watts, even though it's only at 72%. So it should be running at full, full steam ahead. This isn't normal action, but this might explain some of the things that you'll see later on in this video regarding solar. So I've plugged it out and plugged that in now. And as you can see, it's only nine watts, which makes no sense at all. So I'm just gonna quickly flip back over to my mobile phone just to confirm what we're seeing and it's not a misreading on the actual battery itself. And we're back. That's capped at nine watts. And as you've just seen on my mobile phone, it's, um, it's not drawing it. I thought this was actually a power brick issue, but what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna switch over and simulate you charging it in your car using my other solar generator and just show you that, or what it does and the behavior on that as well. Okay, so it's time to simulate a 12 volt charging now. I've got my trusty old 288 watt hour solar generator and you can see that uh, little light there on the uh, adapter just showing that we've got power going through so as if you're plugging it into your car via your cigarette lighter so what we do now is we're just going to plug this straight in here and then see what we get on the display so that should start charging now as if you're in your car quite happily it usually gets to around 20 watts as it's doing at the moment and again this was really just for me to check to see whether it was a power brick issue or not so I did the same as I would before. So I just simulate like you've knocked something out in your car and then oh, you've quickly picked it up and pushed it back in. Because I know these cigarette lighter things have a tendency to knock out quite easily, especially when you're driving about. And as you can see, it's dropped down to 12 watts again. So it's capped itself as it, we saw with the power brick. So I'm doing, doing that again. 
take that one out, put that one in again. And then again, we'll see you know, it'll probably cap itself off once it's settled down. And as you can see, it's gone back to seven watts, which is the timing shows it puts it up significantly longer to charge. Um, the only way I've really found to sort of combat this is actually to take out, and this is the same we're using the power brick, take out the power and just leave it for a few seconds. So it actually stop the, the power or the display goes off. And then once it's gone off and then give it a few seconds that, and then if you plug it back in again, um, it should start to, uh, you know, charge itself properly again. And then it should go back up to where it was before. And as you can see, it's just done that. So it's gone back up and it's actually gone a little bit quicker. But it normally settles down around the 20 watts when I'm doing it for this. So this is the same type of thing that happened with the power brick. So very odd behavior. So I've managed to uh, come outside quickly in the sort of 10 seconds of sun we've had in the UK for, for weeks on end. So I'm hoping you can see that the uh, display on here. It's not working very well. And it is actually charging at the moment. I'm using the DC input, as you can see. And that goes up into the uh, solar panel here, as it would do normally, and as I've used it on my other 288 watt hour one. And um, again, the sun's pretty weak at the moment because we're between rain showers. But the problem with this is, I found is that if you interrupt the sun, if you like take the, the effectiveness down, what happens is the wattage actually falls down as well. So if you can see that's saying at two watts now. And what it won't do is it won't rise up again. So if you, if you have a cloudy day when you're charging this and you leave it to its own devices, what happens is it won't actually increase its charging rate back up to where it was. So if I pull that out now, and hope the sun stays out, and let the display go to sleep, and then plug it back in, it was showing two watts before, and as you can see it's already gone back up. But it won't go above that, he says, as it goes to 8 watts. It's like caps. So if I take it out again and let it go to sleep again, let that shut right down, and let the display go to sleep, and plug it back in. The sun's a little bit stronger now, so it should, in theory, go back up to a high wattage, and I've just unplugged. And there we go, look, it's gone up to 20 watts. The problem I face with this, and I think it might be might be a solar panel issue, is the um, Anderson connector doesn't work, which I'm just going to show you now while I have a bit of sun. Okay, so Anderson cable, as you can see, is now plugged in. It goes up into the DC output. So it's a bit windy today. And as you can see, there is nothing on the screen whatsoever. So it isn't working at all. So what I'm going to do is just grab a, a voltmeter and just check that we're getting power to that and then uh, see where we are from there. So voltmeter, as you can see, is now plugged into the Anderson cable that's coming out of the uh, solar panel. And if we look on there, it's showing at 23.6 volts. So um, it is definitely generating, and as we see when we use the DC on this, from exactly the same output, it gives us at least 20 watts even with this fairly uh, weak sunshine so we know this cable is working so it must be something to do with the battery or the range on it let's get into resetting this battery back to factory settings now so if you do have any issues and that which not, i've not really had other than the anderson uh, charging on the solar on this battery all you need to do is do a reset and that's what the manufacturer asks you to do anyway so it's easy to do on here so you just find the DC button and you literally just keep it held down for 20 seconds so if you watch the display here you'll see that after 20 seconds you must keep your finger on it even though it's gone off and then you should get a restart of that whole screen which means that the battery has then been reset so we're almost there now and that there we go so that take your finger off once you see that the battery is now reset to uh, the factory settings. OK, it's confession time now. I read the manual. Um, yes, I have to stand up and say that I read the manual. It's not something I normally do, but uh, this battery has so many features built in that um, I had to. 
And I'd also like to thank my subscribers and people that contacted me via email to let me know about the additional bits and pieces that happened and also feedback they had back from the manufacturer as well. Very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. So um, in this case, uh, the USB-C uh, PD is supported on this, which PD stands for power delivery. So if you're an owner of an iMac or you have Apple products and so forth, you can actually use uh, blocks like this. This is a U green one. This is a 65 watt one that I purchased uh, specifically to test and use uh, for quick charging from the mains on this battery itself. And it works brilliantly. Um, it's actually quicker than the power brick that comes with it. Uh, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But effectively, this uh, output section here, which was covered in the last video with the USB-C connector here, enables you not only to obviously charge things from the battery, but also charge the battery from this port. Uh, and again, that's in the manual that I was uh, reluctant to read. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug uh, this power brick in now, this U green one, and then hook it up and then just show you how this particular one works on here. Power brick is uh, plugged in, powered up, ready to go now. So let's uh, just plug in the USB-C. So again, we're not, we're not taking charge, we're actually putting charge back in the battery. So we we'll plug that one in and then we'll watch how the uh, watt meter goes here. And look at that, it's jumped up to 60 watts almost straight away. So no messing about, no ramping up. So that's now charging quicker than the power brick that comes with it. And we've just literally got a, a fairly good quality USB-C cable here. So it's USB-C to USB-C. And that's it really. So there's none of that um, if you want to travel about or you want to charge this while you're um, you know, literally in a hotel room if you want to take this with you or you're on the move somewhere. You haven't got to carry all that brick and all that with you and you still got this USB cable to then charge other things with where the power bricks a bit tied down to just specifically charging uh, this unit and that goes straight in. The other thing I've noticed about this as well is um, unlike when you charge from the uh, DC port on this you don't need to wait around with the USB-C you just literally pull it out and you watch the display should go off instantly so there's none of that you know the issue that I showed you earlier with waiting for the display to turn off so you can actually start charging right up to the potential of the device you've plugged into the DC port. There's none of that with this. It's straight in, straight out and then you, you literally plug it straight in again and it will ramp straight up again and start charging the battery straight to 60. Sometimes tops out at 61 watts so from a 65 watt rated unit that's pretty good. So I'm counting for losses. So that's that's really the quickest way that I've found other than the sort of troubles I've had with the solar panel, um, as in not from uh, charging through the DC port, but charging through the Anderson port. So we need to find out about that. One other thing I wanted to cover on uh, this battery is when you're charging off the USB ports on the side, so the outputs there, sometimes I find if I'm charging something that has a low draw, so it doesn't need a lot of watts to charge it. So for example, these are like my gym headphones here these wireless headphones here, and they've got a very low draw on the battery. What the battery does is, is actually, if I just switch that on now, hopefully that'll start charging. And if it's very low at uh, a very low charge rate, so you can see that's on at the moment, it's a little red, you should be able to see a red light on there. And sometimes when this is actually charging and they're not fully charged, the battery turns itself off because it thinks that there's not enough draw because the DC one is auto shut off. So when it detects, you know, there's not enough wattage going through, it will switch itself off. So that's just a little note to make. So when you're charging things on their own like this, it might be an idea to charge multiple things up because this is drawing just a watt. And I think on the odd occasion, it will drop down to zero, which means the battery thinks it needs to switch itself off. So it actually saves power by switching the DC off automatically. We hope you liked our video and found it useful. If you have managed to get your battery charging via the Anderson port, please let us know because it just won't work with our 60 watt panel for some reason. So we need to follow up with all pals to find out. All the links you'll need to be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Dadvinci.